Hey everyone and welcome back. Wanted to talk a few minutes since we got the single wheels out here and just kind of show those a little bit. We don't run these all the time but when we go to a show if we have good weather and we feel like it we yank them out and run both of the single wheels uh, up together. And last night was the Martinsville weekly Thursday night cruise in. So we went and it was the third Thursday so we were able to go to that and listen to the bands and whatnot. But we're going to be working on uh, another trailer today. I can't wait to shut that off. Uh, been listening to that for about two hours. Yeah over it. Let's take a look at these trailers though. These are called cycle camps and they are tiny little tent trailers. You know they're tiny when you can fit two of them in a six foot bed. I wanted to pick them up in the double cab. I'm not sure they would have fit in there. But they're both in pretty decent shape fiberglass wise. Uh, this one obviously has the, the white one has the worst paint, but I think it'll actually clean up pretty good. It's mainly just molded, but the, uh, the blue one for sure, it's already been painted and pretty much ready to go. It's actually got a pretty decent paint job on it. So the blue one has a brand new tent with it. And then I have a pattern. I have the original canopy for the white one. I just, it doesn't have a new one. And they both have little cooler. Somebody's made little cooler holders. So I'll throw a vintage cooler on those. And those will be perfect little behind the Volkswagen trailer. And we're going to start on this one. And try to get it ready to go. Uh, it needs a lot of love. Missing a, a light. Wheels or tires are flat. Notice it doesn't have a lug pattern uh, wheel on it, so I've got to come up with some way to me just change the axle out to make that where a spare can be carried and changed if need be. Swivel hitch doesn't swivel, so this doesn't move. Got to work on that. Uh, obviously, it needs some love in the gel coat. I think it'll come back though. I don't think it's too far gone where we can't save it. And then let me pop this open and I'll show you the inside of it. Looks an awful lot like a Volkswagen T-handle, doesn't it? Hmm. This is what they look like on the inside. They've got little kickstand arms that hold up the topper. You can see those little hinges need some love, and then all of the wood will get redone with marine grade plywood. I did find an old cooler at a secondhand place, and I've thrown it in here. That'll be what goes with this trailer. So that is our project for the day. Let's get started. Yeah, I went to take the uh, the rims off of there, and decided to go with a hub style. Uh, onto that axle because one this rim here you can see that little hole so I'm gonna have to repair that and these are single wheel rims like exactly like what's on our single wheels and uh, dad and I don't have spares on our single wheel trailers so I'm gonna keep the two rims that were originally on the little white trailer for our single wheel spares and I've gone to hub style four lug uh, trailer tire on this. It already looks better just sitting up. Not so trashy looking. So and I've just got a couple lug nuts on them. I don't have the castle nuts tight or anything. I just stuck it on there because I need to paint all of that. That's funny. What's that buddy? Well, pump it up really good. I am. It's not working. Oh, 
go. keep working on it. So it is kind of nice to be able to move it around now. It's not on flat tires. I'm going to take off this top portion. There's a hinge here that runs all along. Let's set this rim down. It runs all along up here, and it had a rivet in it that rusted. So I'm going to put an aluminum rivet in it, but you can see it's not attached right there. So I'm going to drill all of those out. We'll take this top piece off and we'll set it on that table right back there. And then we'll be able to work on it a little easier that way after it's apart. But I think those are going to work out okay. It's a weird kind of spindle setup on this trailer. I'll show you when I paint under there. We'll flip it upside down. It'll be easier to see. So let me go uh, get this crisis averted here. I got that top off of there. And then the lid is in pretty decent shape. I went ahead and cut the wiring. Getting you in the shadow there, sorry. Because there were a couple of places that it was not in great shape uh, up there. So I just want to make sure it's all fresh and good to go. Uh, it looks like they've just kind of grafted in a piece of hose and fed it through it. So I it pulls pretty easily, so I should be able just to feed my new wiring in through that way. And we'll put some new... I've ordered something similar to this you can't buy this specific tail light anymore this is a pathfinder 576 vintage trailer light i might be able to find something on ebay but obviously we need to be replacing those so uh it's not very heavy pretty lightweight but as you can see all of this is in pretty rough shape uh tongue weight on these things is super light I'm working on getting that swivel loosened up. Let me get this board uh, kind of pulled out and we'll see if we can get to that hinge today. Kind of get that taken apart. I don't want to take these little clips off yet until we kind of have another piece to put them onto because that's where your tent attaches. So since those are marked, just leave them marked. Yeah, let me fold that out and I'll show you what they look like. So it's a pretty simple little design. It has four locking hinges on the leg. And then this piece will actually swivel the opposite way once we get that kind of folded down. Let me go get a tripod because I can't hold this one-handed and do that. Hopefully you can see okay there. what she looks like and then that becomes uh, the piece of the end of the tent and I'm gonna make my piece when I cut it yeah, I keep getting in the Sun here when I cut my piece my notch isn't gonna go back as far so that this piece will actually stay straight so see how it kind of leans in I want it to stay straight simple little design though be easy to make these suckers Especially if you use just a, a metal and made the kind of half clamshell trapezoidal piece there out of metal. Some lightweight aluminum or something. Super simple design. And these aren't in production anymore. I'm sure there's a patent on them somewhere, but... Let's see if we can get that hinge off of there. That piece is definitely gone. And I don't like using this kind of cardboard wood if you want to call it wood it's basically just pressed cardboard I prefer marine grade plywood it's a little heavier but it lasts so much longer I've redone a couple of these type of trailers not this specific brand but I've had pretty good success with selling them flipping them so we'll get that apart see what it looks like underneath this piece here Looks like it's got uh, the rivet to the bottom of the axle. Looks like it goes through right here. Got like a carriage bolt through there, so we'll have to take the, the axle off. Not sure what that is. We're about to find out though. All right, let's get this hinge here off. So this is the chaos that's left behind from today. I got the bottom piece off of there, 
Okay, I just got to take the legs and things off of uh, this middle piece here. Got the tail lights off over here. I've ordered a uh, seven inch replacement. They don't make, no one has, and they don't make this Pathfinder uh, 576 anymore. So unfortunately, even though that one's in pretty decent shape, we got to replace them with something else. I bought a set of what is now the replacement for the Pathfinder 576 off of eTrailer.com. They sell vintage trailer stuff. I got the floor out. It's right here. And there was even a spot inside that didn't actually get wet. But this stuff's just, I mean, you can't, I can't reuse that. Wouldn't reuse it anyway, because it's not going to last. Check out these chains. They were held on by these tiny little S-hooks. I don't think, I think if I just pulled on that, it would just bend that S-hook. So I'll have to weld a link up here and we'll go to that for the connection rather than that little S-hook. But all in all, pretty successful day, I think. And we will uh, bring you back when we get something else done on it. It's going to be a fun, fun little trailer. I think they'll be the cutest trailer on the campground. Now, we did have an injury. This is my blood trail from here to here. I was sun blinded and I walked right in to that guy. So that was my result. <laughs> and it nicked a little uh, little vein, so it, it bled a little worse probably than it would have normally. Uh, we're not having fun until somebody gets hurt. And as long as it's me and not my five year old, I call it a win. Well, the universe decided today we were going to get some liquid sunshine. So. I'm taking advantage of that. I was going to paint. I did get one of them painted. So I just kills the bottom, what will be this piece right here. So the underside of this piece uh, is has kills. That K-I-L-Z has kills two on it. has two coats on it. And I went ahead and went around the edges as well. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the, of the rain and kind of wash. This is the bottom of the trailer. And I've gone around and cleaned up all the edges. Fiberglass, when it gets old, the gel coat kind of cracks on it and splinters. And it starts making the edge uh, kind of do this. I can find an example. So it'll kind of start to chip, like along here. So I've just taken a grinder. I've cleaned up all of the edges on this bottom lid. And made everything real smooth. That way, no splinters or anything are going to catch fabric or catch on the tent. And then up here, I've gone through and ground a couple of areas that need repaired. Uh, just because the hole is kind of too deep to just grind. So I ground it down, but if I leave that there, then it's no longer square. So we'll go in and we'll, we'll fix all of that stuff. And fiberglass is pretty tough stuff. I think this is probably a trailer from the 70s. It's older, older than I am, probably. And I'm pretty old. So I've gone through and sprayed this. Uh, we use Clorox. This is what we use. We use this on fiberglass on our boat. Works about as good as anything. And we also use a hull cleaner. I'll bring some of that out here after we've cut it with that stuff. But I just squirted a little bit right there and worked right there. And you can already see a pretty big difference. So I'll clean this up the best I can. And then I'll probably go ahead and put a fresh, fresh coat of... Uh, of spray paint on it. We're just going to paint it like an off-white on the inside or maybe even go with a white. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. And once we get that done, then we can go ahead and put the wood inside of that and reassemble uh, that piece to the trailer frame, which I am going to wire wheel and soak with that uh, rust treatment. And then we'll spray paint it a gloss black. I've got my pieces ready to cut uh, for the piece I'm going to weld in between there and so we're coming along despite the rain rains for washing that's what I say free water I treated that with some bleach I'm just gonna let nature kind of finish the job for us but we won't be painting anymore <laughs> not right now anyway I think it's supposed to blow over here shortly Or not. 
The good news is we can jump over on old Pickle. Work on Pickle in the rain. Oh, now it's going to blow on me. Great. Yeah, it's a couple days later and I have gone through and I took off the aluminum uh, cooler box and I put a steel one on there. And then I ran a couple of supports uh, down here across between the two uh, frame pieces. And I went ahead and ran one from right here up to the uh, to the tray as well. Uh, I just had the thought that if something breaks loose, we've got multiple safeties. I don't think anything's gonna come loose, but always prepare for the worst, I guess. So I just added those little angle pieces and then added that center piece to kind of give it a, and I didn't go all the way up here because I have to put a bolt in there for that swivel hitch. So I left a little gap there for me to adjust that. But I think that'll, that'll really reinforce it and make it a lot stronger. So I'm getting ready to paint, paint it. I have washed it and then sprayed it with that Osfo rust treatment. I need to hit that with a wire wheel. It leaves kind of a white residual in some areas. You just take the wire wheel and just knock that off before you paint it. So let me go hit a couple areas. I see a couple I've missed now that I'm over here filming, so hit that and we're gonna slap some black gloss on it. Oh, I made a new foot too. I was gonna do that a little different, but with the cooler box and how that went on, I just kept it the way it was. I made the footprint itself a little bit bigger than the original one was, but it can only go on one side and can't hang back unless you notch it because it comes up and hits right there. I've got everything painted. It's not a perfect paint job. We didn't have perfect material to work with, and most of that's going to be covered anyway. Once the cooler's sitting there, all of those three will be covered. And the parts that matter are in pretty good shape. They look pretty good. So we're pretty much ready for reassembly. I got the last piece of the, the board painted, and that actually will be turned down. It just has two coats of kills on it. That stuff that's supposed to prevent mold and all that kind of goodness. I'm going to try and take a little bit of uh, sandpaper, wet sand, this top piece. The bottom piece cleaned up gorgeous. It, uh, it really came back. So I'm probably not even going to worry about painting this bottom piece yet. And there's a few little areas on it that are stained slightly. That's just dirt from the rain. But it cleaned up really nice. And then I just painted the inside only where the wood is not going to be. So where there's wood, I just bleached it really nice and got it real clean and then spray painted everything else. That's what we'll do to the top piece too. Although it'll be exposed, all of it will be exposed. So I'll have to paint the whole inside of this. But. Let's see how much of it we can bring back. And I got the rust on the front where the lights were. We'll work on that too. We'll see how much we can bring back. If we can't bring it back, we'll paint it. I've got a few areas where I patched holes too. So those will have to be just blended with some spray paint. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Well, I don't think we're gonna be as lucky on this piece as we were on the other one. Uh, it's cleaning up really nice. I left a line where you can kind of see the difference. So there's the differences in the two lights and then down the middle. But the paint on top is really thin. I don't know if this will show up on camera or not because we're getting kind of sun blinded here. But right in here, it's just really thin. And we've got a scrape that was already there that's down into the fiberglass. It's, it's, it must have happened early on in its life because it doesn't feel rough. But yeah, we're just, just a little thin on top there. So I'm going to try and get like an almond. This isn't a bright white. It probably looks like it in film, but it's not. If I can get kind of an almond color, almost like the beetle rims, I think we'll be pretty close to what it is. Uh, has turned and aged to over the years. It's a bummer because it's borderline. It, it's really borderline keeping the original paint. I wish I could. But I'm guessing what happened, it got a little thin up here and somebody painted it. 
sanded it down and painted it because the, the paint colors here are slightly different. And it kind of looks like I can see paint streaks in it. Like somebody's had a can up there. And then I found another little spot right here I need to repair. The fiberglass itself is in really good shape. It's just the gel coat. Kind of rough. So I'll keep at it. We'll get it completely clean. And then I'm probably just going to paint it. I think that's probably our best our best bet at this point. I love keeping the original paint, so if I can mask off and kind of blend in areas, I'll try it, but it's probably gonna end up just being uh, the whole thing getting painted one color. Keep it kind of uniform that way. The bottom I'm planning on leaving the way it was though. So I'll keep at it. So I let the sun die, die down a little bit so we could get a little bit better look at what we've done here. I patched that spot and then there are a couple spots up here that, that dig mark. And then there were a couple holes up here that I went ahead and filled. And there was that place over here I got. And then down on the side. So we're pretty well ready for paint on this guy. Kind of sad to have to paint it. Uh, <laughs> I'm all about preserving the original. But I think it'll look a lot better if we paint it. It's just so light. I mean, that is seeing through the fiberglass. It's smooth texture. It's just the paint's just worn down on it. And anywhere that it was exposed real heavily to the sun, that's the way it is. So we'll go ahead and get some white paint on it. I think that'll make it really pop and shine. But I'll paint the inside first because while that is kind of drying, we can flip it over and go ahead and paint this side. Uh, getting ready to weld the spindle. So I don't have a, any kind of lathe, metal lathe or machining equipment. And these new hubs are just a little bit, I'm gonna try to stay out of the shadow here, just a little bit um, wider than the old ones were. So what happens is this hole is drilled, and you're not gonna be able to see it. I think you can see it. The hole for the uh, cotter pin or the stop pin to keep the castle nut from backing off is right at the edge and I can't quite hit it. So I'm gonna lengthen it just a little bit with just a piece of uh, solid bar. And that is just slightly narrower diameter than the actual spindle is. But all I need this here for is to get a pin through it because we're right on the edge and I can't drill out any more there because there's nothing left for me to drill. It's not gonna have any pressure on it. The wheel isn't gonna be determined on it. It just keeps the castle nut from backing off. So I've ground kind of tapered, get you to focus there, kind of tapered the, uh, I'm going to weld on there. I'm just going to try to delicately <laughs> go around and tack some weld in there. I went ahead and put the nut on it so that I can back it back off and maybe not booger the threads too badly. So that's my plan for that as a solution to that. I wish I had a lathe. I would just take it and uh, bring it back just a little bit. It only needs about 3 16 not very much. Basically, just we can get it on just about to the edge of our threaded portion there. So that's my solution to that. So I'm going to do both sides, and then we're pretty well ready to uh, start putting this thing back together. Well, that worked out pretty well. I may have to cut some of it off. We're going to see if I can fit the uh, dust cap on. I need to probably bend that one around. Yeah, I might be able to clear it. And I would have just replaced the spindle, but the hookup on this trailer is a little odd. And I was trying to not replace all of that. So the spindle actually comes all the way past the shock. So you can see right here they've threaded in. So it's eight and a half or eight and a quarter is a normal spindle length. And then they've got this shock threaded in the back. So I didn't want to have to redo all of that. So I'm cheated. So let's go see if we can tap that on there. If that'll fit, we're golden. I just got to do the other side. Well, I've just been kind of slowly working this thing back together among all the other many, many projects I have. This has a coat of white primer. It's like a Rust-Oleum primer on it. And I did that to kind of help fill in the, the little uh, textured areas where it had cracked. And it did a pretty good job of covering them. So we'll go over, I'll lightly sand it. It did have some pits and pores, kind of hard to see. In the in the fiberglass itself that I did not repair. I probably should have, but I didn't repair those. 
So it just needs a coat of lightly sanded and then a coat of uh, gloss enamel, and that will be ready to go, or gloss something, whatever I've got. I got the floors, the, the new wheels on. Uh, earlier, I was going to put the other side on, and I realized I'd put the lug nuts in wrong over here, so I flipped those back. And then put the floor in, put the hinge in. I think it looks pretty good. And I just eyeballed the alignment on the linoleum. Not too bad. A little off. Not terrible. And I took a little bit of steel wool and kind of polished these up the best I could. It's been a lengthy project, but it wouldn't have been. <laughs> I could probably have knocked this out pretty quickly, but among everything else and all the other stuff. And I needed to paint, and we kept getting rain, and we just, I couldn't catch a break on the weather to get it painted. So I think this makes the fifth little trailer I've done. Motorcycle trailers. It actually doesn't look too bad, just kind of in primer. Rattle can. Not too terrible. Alright, let me set the camera back here and I'll fold this up. I have a little touch-up to do where I drilled out and I didn't tape off the back side. I'll go back with some paint and kind of touch that up. So the legs will fold in. The legs fold in and then that piece lays down flat. Pretty cute little design. So I'll pull that back out and let that linoleum kind of sit. And we'll be ready to put the lid on pretty soon. I like it. So everything underneath, all of the points where this trailer is held, or the topper is held to the trailer frame, we used uh, uh, T-nuts. And these are pretty neat little design. So basically, up here on top I have one of these down into the wood, and then from the bottom they're threaded. So from the bottom I can just uh, thread my bolt up through and it actually sucks the two surfaces together and then it also serves as a lock washer keeps it from backing off lock washer on this side i went ahead and put one on the other side as well and then under the hinge all of these are t-nuts not this big i used a smaller size but all of the hardware i used that it works so much better we've done enough of these now we know so the hinge all the way along has those t-nuts on the back side you kind of have to think uh, of the process and what phase needs to be done first because obviously I had to put all of those in on this piece before this piece went down. I am completely inside this little camper and I'm trying to figure out where my T-handle, I just bought a uh, garage door handle, I'm trying to figure out where that's going to hit, where my groove needs to be and obviously I need to cut that off. Uh, the old one is savable, but I didn't have a key to it, and these are only 7 bucks, so I figured it was worth the replacement just to fix it and have a key. But yeah, you can actually fit inside one of these little campers. Who knew, right? It's a tight little fit, though, let me tell you. Well, there she is with the lid all riveted back on. Uh, that didn't didn't take much. I used the camper hinge out of my grandparents' old camper that we recently tore apart and uh, made a car hauler out of. Uh, paint's not perfect. It's just rattle can, but it's got a pretty good shine to it. Probably should have used like a real paint, but I just used rattle can. Here I put the tail lights on. I just thought I'd show. I had to solder a ground wire to the bulb socket because these are intended to ground to the backing plate and that actually would go to a, a metal trailer. We put the screw through it, it would go to a metal trailer. This is fiberglass, so we're not gonna get a ground. So I just soldered it to the bulb socket and ran the wire out back with everything else. So that should work just fine. I got the latch bracket all installed. So when the, when the uh, trailer is flipped open, that's on the bottom. That doesn't ever 
interfere with camping. But when it's being hauled, you can lock it. And I got the new, this is just a garage door T-handle. So I think we're pretty well good to go. Let me get these lights on here and we'll take a peek, uh, see what we got. The wiring I've already run, but I need to put some of that corrugated uh, tubing around that and zip tie it to protect it. There's going to be a little guy inside here and I know how that goes. Before I pass this trailer off, I'm going to haul it a little bit, tow it a little bit. I'm towing it to our campsite this weekend and I want to make sure that it's good to go before I pass it off since I've had every single screw and bolt off of it, including the wheels. So we just want to make sure we're good before we pass it off and I figure if it tows good this weekend, it's good to go. We get these lights on, we'll see what we got. Well, these didn't have a license plate light on them. So this is what we get. Turned out pretty cute. Put some reflectors on the side there. I'm just glad it works. Sweet! Well, amongst all the kids' toys and whatnot, here is the completed canvas. I will say I added a skylight per request of the customer. I would never do that again. Made it sewing really difficult because it wants to hang up on the corner of the table and it's super stiff, not flexible like the fabric. I also added clear plastic behind the windows on the back side of the window. Well, it's on the inside of the tent. I put a plastic piece. So it has the screen in the middle on the little porthole windows. It has a flap on the outside. But then I thought you might want some light and still be warm. So I put plastic on the back side of all, on the, it would be on the inside of the tent of all of the little windows. So that also made it a little more difficult to sew. All I need to do is hem it. I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and hem it, but I'm gonna do a fit first on the trailer just to make sure we don't have anything that's wonky because I don't wanna unrip or rip things out and redo it if I don't have to. And then we've gotta go back and add uh, these little tabs that sew along the hem so they get sewn like that and then a bungee cord gets run through them and that's what hooks the tent down under the trailer. So let's take it out and see if it fits. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think it's going to be perfect once we get everything tensioned. I don't have a, uh, there's not a rod up in the upper one, but length looks good. It looks it looks perfect. I'm going to have to go light on the hem on the edge here. But it was that way anyway. It was only a quarter inch hem. But I think it's going to work perfect. Because there's plenty of, uh, plenty of give here to accommodate that. And I've just barely got it balanced there. The canvas I made is quite a bit heavier than the original. I think that's going to work just fine. Get a tension rod up at the top. Yeah, that's that's going to work. Sweet.
Well, the good news is it fits. I was a little nervous about it. But it looks pretty good on there. There's a few little bobbles and wrinkles. But I like the window. It was a pain to sew. But having that in there does make for a nice view in the morning camping. I added this center pole. That wasn't there. I think that that helps deflect the rain. The problem is it wanted to kind of sag in the middle, especially with the added weight of that plastic. And I did, I want it to be self-supporting. So I don't want to put a tie off here where you tie this off. Plus I don't want a whole bunch of pressure up on those tension rods because up where it's attached to the, to the top is just by a tension rod, like a curtain rod. Pretty happy with how that turned out. So it's so cute with the little portal windows. Um, we wanted to do like a bright, bright orange, but the material just isn't available in orange, a heavier weight. We could do a lighter weight, but it's not going to be a four season camper. It really isn't anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little skirt to go along the bottom out of nylon orange, just to add a little 1970s flair to it. I did use brown tie-offs <clears throat> and then obviously the glass window up on top has if you don't want the light you can just pull the cover down the window shade undo the sash cover the window but cute little camper let's get a skirt around it see what that looks like I think that'll help warm it up just a little bit and we'll uh, take it for a little drive. Yeah, you know, there it is, kind of with its skirt on. <laughs> we should have made it just a little bit longer. But I think it'll be okay. There's a pipe down in the lower pocket, and then there's just bungee, thin bungee cord up on top. And it just hooks on a couple of the clips that the tent is hooked on. It's not blowing too bad. It's pretty breezy out right now. The idea is just to trap some heat if we run a heater or something under it. It's supposed to be kind of chilly this weekend. And the person who purchased it is wanting to camp in it this weekend. Kind of looks like it's floating. So that is done. All I need to do is make a bag for everything to go in. And we're going to call that one a win. We got one more to do, but it is, uh, it has a canvas, so I don't have to spend as much time on it. What 
an awesome little thing that is. You can't even tell it's back there. I mean, truly. I wouldn't know if it fell off. I had the window down, so I guess I would have heard it, but there's no way you can tell it's back behind you. Toe's great. I hit the highway with it. Of course, I'm in the bus, so I can't hit like 70 miles an hour or anything, but we probably hit 60, 65 there for a bit. And then I took it down some gravel roads and back in the forestry on some logging roads just to kind of see how it did. It did great. I didn't have any issues with it. So I am pleased with how that has turned out. And I'd say the tongue weight's probably less than 10 pounds. I mean, I'm serious. The thing is super light. Thanks for being here, everyone. This one turned out pretty, pretty nice, I think. I appreciate each and every one of you, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Are you praying to your timer? Get me off. What's on your head? My hat! My puffing hat! Your puffing I see hat. your video! I see your video on me! <laughs> I think it's time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dalton. You want to see me buff, Mama? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Just not a trailer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a weirdo. <laughs> Water. <laughs>